Hello, everyone. This is uh, Banner Rankings uh, Live uh, for our ninth show. Um, actually, hold on. Could you hit the, uh, that? I forgot to turn that light on. Oh, goodness. How do you turn that No, top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Joe Lewis. I'm here with my uh, producer and lovely wife, Anne. Hi, Anne. <laughs> so, yeah, say hello. Yeah, see, big difference. And uh, in, in this mixed up, tumble up, jumble up world, uh, we have a special guest who is upside down in my uh, uh, in my feed. Um, maybe you could rectify that before we uh, flip everyone out. Um, huh. And uh, the uh, anyway, so this is uh, the ninth uh, edition of Battle uh, Battle Rankings Live. And we're going to be covering uh, Team Yankee Iraq. Um, and we have a special guest, uh, Kevin Morris, uh, who uh, is a uh, – well, that's interesting. You're still upside down. Um, and Kevin is uh, uh, a, um, 2018 West Coast Naturals champion, like two that. times Masters champ, uh, or attendance for Flames of War, and he will be attending uh, in June the first Team Yankee North America Masters, and um, in uh, in he plays Iraqis, and I brought him in as our subject matter expert. Uh, <clears throat> kind of, let me bring him on. Hello. There Hello he is. Santa Monica, California, Joe. I, You're looking great. I'm not too sure how to flip you around. But, <laughs> Does that uh, still look like I'm hanging on my ceiling? Uh, say something, Kevin. Hello. Can you hear me? Well, that is weird. Uh, yeah, I can't hear you now. Uh-oh. Um, that's right probably for me. the best. Uh, what's it? He looks right side up to me. He looks up right upside to you? Yes. Okay, that's all that matters. As long as he looks up right, right upside for you. Yeah. But you can't hear him, can you? Nope. Nope. Well, actually, I don't have the sound on for him. Hold on a second here. I don't have it. I don't have it on in this Hello? thing here. Go ahead and talk. Hi. Oh wait, I can hear him. He looks up right upside to you. And I can hear him. Okay, that's all. It matters. Hey. As long as he looks up right, right upside. Talk okay, again, so, Kevin. But you can't hear him. Can't Go ahead and say something, Kevin. Uh, hi, my name is Kevin Morris. I uh, reside in Santa Monica, California, and I enjoy eating burritos with guacamole on it. Oh, wait, I can't hear him. That's interesting. You can I'll hear him. It. I can't. Hey. Okay, Kevin. Go ahead and say something, Kevin. Uh, hi, my name is Kevin Morris. I uh, reside in Santa Monica, California. There you go. And I enjoy eating burritos with guacamole on it. Well, mm -hmm. who does not love a good burrito? <laughs> this is starting to sound like it might well, you be know a what? message to We are Mars. somehow going to power through this. Uh, it's you know? pretty delayed. We are going to power through this. Oh, and now uh, you, we're going to have a delay. Oh, you're going to have a delay, but it's going to loop oh. because who does not love a good burrito? Because <laughs> the thing is now that's going to keep on going through. Yep. That is interesting. <laughs> oh, you know what? I know what the deal is. What is it? Now say something, Kevin. Hi. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Bingo. There Hi. it is. There it is. Hey. There it is. Yeah, Kevin, the problem was on your side all the time. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I'll be good. Yeah, you know, say, I'm sorry. I didn't realize thing. I did. Unmute. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Um, the uh, anyway, what's we'll begin again. So <laughs> anyway, we're doing Iraqis. Do we play the national anthem again? No, no. You don't have to play the Iraqi <laughs> national anthem again. Wow. You know, that just makes me want to, you know, going through the streets. Anyway. The uh, basically we we have Team Yankee coming up in um, uh, June twentieth, twenty first uh, here in Indianapolis, where I'm located. Uh, Kev, it's the first Team Yankee Masters, uh, which is you know kind of going off a little interesting, 
but uh, you can, Kevin's helping us out. What we're doing is we're 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 trying to do a build up to the uh, to the tournament itself. Last week we had uh, uh, we did British um, with uh, um, Keith. Keith Keith Gilmore, and uh, now I got Kevin uh, who's going to help us here with Iraqis. Uh, so I, I think before we begin, you know, before we give him the Team Yankee side. Let's do a little history, and I put something together for us. Wow! Yeah, yeah. it's a presentation. About what those look like. Yeah. So uh, here, by the way, uh, if, do you, Kevin, do you know what this is? This uh, this uh, structure. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, I don't know the name of it, but I believe it's a monument to the uh, Iran Iraq War in uh, in. It, uh, in Baghdad, in Baghdad, something like that. Yeah, it is, and it's huge, um, very huge. But it looks like someone really cracked a large nut. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It's very large. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go here. First of all, this is my guest Kevin when he was mm -hmm. uh, from a young age. Uh, <laughs> you, you. Kevin, man, you've been playing uh, Flames of War for some time, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, that was taken back in the early days, uh, you know. But uh, I think I started in probably 2010 or so. 2010. It was it was V three, but it was the it was right before uh, Blood, Glitz, and Glory when everybody really liked those really balanced jumbos that came out. I oh, remember they, I remember they were very balanced and and completely fair. And uh, Americans was my first army, so I'll stick by that. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I started then. Uh, I got originally got into it because uh, uh, never played any sort of miniature game or tabletop game, but a buddy of mine knew I was a history nerd and I, I really enjoyed Finnish history. And uh, he told me there was a game out there that you could play Finnish units, so I, I kind of got hooked. And the rest is history. Okay, that that's cool. Um, <laughs> so you, you didn't play anything before that? I mean, did you role play board games? Anything? Uh, board. I did I did some board gaming, uh, and then you know, uh, I I freed myself from the hex and bought a tape measure and measured a lot of things and realized that there was another way to to game. It's pretty exciting. Uh, but yeah, no, I didn't do any sort of. I wasn't a 40k convert or anything along those lines. I'm I'm, I'm new to the tabletop world. Okay, no, that's cool. Um, you know, uh, my, myself, I, I've been I was playing since like uh, the mid 80s. You know, you know, I just have to age myself, I guess, or date myself. Uh, what uh, oh, what's this kind of go? I, we know you have Iraqis. What, what other armies do you have that's Flames of War and Team Yankee? Uh, I have some Team Yankee Americans. I have some some regular green Soviets. Uh, and then for Flames of War, I have uh, Americans, Japanese, uh, Italians, um, a little bit of Germans, uh, British, some mid-war British. So uh, my, my collection continues to expand just like my uh, belt size. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know that feeling. Well, uh, how, how long have you been playing competitively? Really didn't get into it out in uh, in L.A. Really, my, my entire group of friends, the Los Angeles Historical Gaming Group, uh, we didn't get into it until V4, believe it or not. So we had been playing for a long time, but we decided to try doing some tournaments just about before V4 launched, and uh, we really enjoyed it and, and thought it was a new way to you know, not the big thing for us was uh, the ability to meet people from all around the country, you know, including you and, and the great guys and Able Company, uh, the Screaming Eagles up in, in Minnesota, the East Coast dudes. Uh, it's been a really cool opportunity to meet, uh, you know, the entire kind of flame, greater Flames of War community and now even Europe. So it's been fun. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you, you've been uh, to one uh, European team champion. Uh, that was in... Um... It was in uh, Serbia. No, yeah, no. I was a, I was a ETC newbie, uh, but we had some fun. Uh, rolled some dice. There were some extracurricular activities, uh, and you know, 
we, we fought through the headaches. Just put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. It was a good time. No, I, you know, I, I think if you got the time, you know, you get the time away, that uh, does sound like fun, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, and pretty good competition too. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I've been really following, cool. yeah, I've been following the ETC stuff for, well, I don't know, since the first U.S. team went. Um, she was uh, maybe like five years ago, six years ago. Yeah, um, the, the true uh, godfathers of, of competitive flames of war. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> the trailblazers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's All right. fun. Yeah, it's good, and 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 that's that's uh, if you if it wasn't fun, then why would we do it, right? Right, right. That's the key. It is a hobby. It's fun, but uh, we can get our competitive juices flowing from time to time, and you know, hopefully, uh, I know the Iraqi book has been out for a while, but hopefully, there's a couple words of wisdom for any listeners that might be uh, interested maybe maybe get convinced a couple people to buy some t72s or 62s or 55s and all the great iraqi support that's my goal oh that's good because um i i didn't really know anything um you know i i'd say military equipment wise i stopped like like at world war ii um mm -hmm. uh, but you know, political, uh, geopolitical stuff. I, I kind of followed afterwards. Uh, but, uh, so yeah, I, I had some fun looking up some stuff and, and, uh, <laughs> researching, uh, researching, uh, this subject, uh, of the Iraqis. Uh, so I, I guess, uh, oh, and your, your group, uh, your, uh, S Southern California, right. That's the name of your group. Yeah, yeah, we, we go by many names, but uh, the one that uh, fellow Angelino Igor Torgerson came up with was uh, Lost Angeles Historical Wargamers. Uh, we play mostly out of Game Emperor Pasadena, but we also go around the county, like Brea, California, uh, Brookhurst Hobbies. If you guys are in SoCal and you're watching this, uh, love to, to play a game with you. We do learner games. Uh, we're there. We're at Game Empire every Saturday, uh, you know, as long as there's no COVID uh pretty much all day it would be great to hang out um uh, you know and uh play some games and you know uh and you do host some tournaments as a matter of fact a yeah. lot of them but there uh, is a yeah. tournament that is different from any other tournament <laughs> well yeah it, it, it is a it is one of our favorite events uh we're going to be doing it again this labor day it's just a one-day tournament so people can come in from out of town it's really easy to participate it's right near LAX, gorgeous LAX. Uh, it's called The Longest Day. It's uh, eight rounds of Flames of War over a 24-hour period. Uh, proud to report that nobody has died. Uh, we've had a couple attendees come close, but uh, no one's died, and there's been no attempted murder. So uh, we'll okay. count that as a win. And then there was also you know, some great games of Flames of War. Uh, game round eight, uh, a lot of crazy mistakes, and uh, a couple of mistakes that were made that caused some top end positions to shift because people pulled themselves off of objectives, things like that. So it's pretty fun to see all this, the silly errors. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, I'm, you know what? I don't think Navy SEAL basic training has nothing on this tournament. Right. Yeah. We're just like buds, you know, right down the Miramar, they've got buds, but we've got the uh, longest day. Uh, I, I would honestly say, too, we'd probably give them a run for their money in terms of our endurance and, and overall physical health and stamina. But, you know, that's just my opinion. I, you know, science can't prove one way or the other. Well, this is a man's <laughs> game. <laughs> I don't want to get my ass kicked by any uh, any uh, former uh, SEAL listening to this, if there is anybody. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> former? Yeah. SEAL Team 6 is busting down the door right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Tony's got a couple questions real quick. Oh, que questions already? Yeah, I got two of them. Okay, right. go ahead. Does Kevin feel there's any playable differences between the Iraqis and Syrians in Team Yankee? Maybe you can hold off to answer that one. Okay, that well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Write that one down. We'll answer that towards the okay, end. Okay, so Patrick, yeah. you hang on that one then. So we're going to get back to that one. And um, when is lo the longest day and where? Someone, said, someone already answered L.A., but when is it? 
Oh, Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend. Okay, Labor. so you guys can answer that one. But I'll hold on to Patrick. I'm holding on to your question. By the way, uh, the the longest day is that a that's at a convention, right? It is. It's at a something called Strategicon or one or, or con. It's a Strategicon event. Uh, it's held at the Hilton uh, LAX, so it's pretty convenient compared to getting to the airport. You won't have to deal with LA traffic unless you want to go sightseeing. Um, so it's, uh, you know, they got shuttles to and from and, uh, you know, but you can extend your stay and go see, you know, the Hollywood sign. It's just going to take you, uh, if you do it on a weekday, uh, you know, three hours to drive there. But other than that, it's gorgeous and you'll have a great time. Just keep your windows rolled up at all times and uh, don't, don't look anybody in the eye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, I think with that, are you, you ready to delve into, we'll do a brief history of uh, Iraq? Great. Sounds good. Okay. Look forward to hearing it from you. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, okay, here we go. Well, so I did this overview uh, for you people at home. You might enlarge the screen. Uh, I, I leveraged some other people's work and uh, brought it here to you uh, to view. Uh, first of all, there are two belligerents, that, uh, which is, you know, which, by the way, the Oral War, Oil War book, Oral Wars, Wars, book is this versus like what, you know, Team Yankee Europe, or, you know, that's, ha that's fictional. Uh, Iraq and Iran actually happened uh so we have some real context here about some real forces uh and some real you know unit structures and, and that kind of stuff so these these things are historically based on the two uh so the the kind of like i'll go with the history of iraq first uh, and by the way you can't talk one without talking the other so uh iraq um had uh, a a coup in the late fifties, where the Bath Party with two A's uh, took over uh, in the military coup, and from the Bath Party, um, which I believe was we didn't figure out was it Shiites or Sunnis? Um, okay, I think the Shias are in the Iran. That they're the leadership of Iran. Okay. And the Sunnis, I think, are in Iraq. But it. All right. So anyway, whatever, whatever background. But you know, Saddam was more secular. Okay, we'll just put it that way. And he was religious when it was convenient. <laughs> okay. And uh, he took over in uh, around 1979. Uh, he rose up. He was a general. Then he became, El, you know, El Presidente, which is interesting. They call him a president, but he's really a dictator. Meanwhile, across the Tigris and the Euphrates is uh, Iran, uh, and for the longest time, it, it had a monarchy or a shah, uh, and the uh, shah of Iran. Uh, was overthrown by a, um, we'll say, kind of a more of a religious coup uh, by the Ayatollah Khomeini uh, and and uh, his ilk, and uh, they had a revolution and they took over around the same time, so 1978, 79, and uh, if you're uh, alive like myself, I think everybody remembers that. Um, well, at that time, the uh, the student the student uprising uh, taking the American embassy hostage, um, and which uh, basically changed nightly news here in America, uh, because instead of taking it in the Arab daily, uh, the major networks started running nightly news, and it was uh, and every day you you know at eleven o'clock you would see on well East Coast. Every every time you would see like Nightline or something like that, Tev Koppel come on and say, 
you know, the Iran hostage situation, day 275. <laughs> and, and it was every day that they were just talking about what was going on. So uh, anyway, so that that's what's there. Uh, so you basically had two governments that had a changeover, uh, each one a little bit violent, <clears throat> and um, each one kind of thinking they would take advantage of the other uh, in the st stability. Uh, Iraq wanted to expand because this little section down here, uh, I'm kind of pointing with my cursor, uh, where the where they um, their father's expanse, those are people who are uh, Arabic. And they were kind of on the wrong side of the river with Iran, with that border. And see, the Iranians are, are basically Persians. And, the, and by the way, this is, this is the simplified version of history. And Iraqi was basically uh, uh, Arabic. And now, yes, there's Shiites and Sunnis and there's Kurds involved. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep it simple for the audience. And, and we, we don't have two and a half hours to discuss the, the history of, the, of this conflict. But the, the main thing is, is that, hey, you know what? I got some peeps over there. I can use it because, it, as you see on this chart, which is the one I got it, there's oil reserves all over the place. And plus, if you can look down here, really can't see it. Uh, it actually expands his um, um, access to uh, to the, uh, uh, the Persian Gulf. Uh, the The thing is, is that it, Iraq is almost a landlocked country, except for that little sliver there, just north of Kuwait. And uh, so, hey, you know what? If I could get more shipping and I can get some oil out of it and get some more peeps. I'm good, right? So that's what uh, Saddam's thinking. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Khomeini, um, he is thinking, you know what? That guy's a heretic and he's got to go. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> so basically, uh, Saddam's thinking, I want this oil. And, uh, and the Shah is thinking, oh, not the Shah, but uh, Khomeini is thinking, I want that guy's uh, head and put in a more uh, a religious type, uh, you know, Sharia law, that kind of stuff in Baghdad, uh, part of their thing. So anyway, we have, so uh, on the two sides, uh, you had uh, at the start of the war, uh, the Iran had about, a, let's say, 100 to 150,000 soldiers. Uh, Iraq had 200,000. <clears> and if you look as we go through it, there was a lot of people killed um, as, as they went through it. Uh, part of the thing is, is that if you take a look, for, for something that was like a, almost an eight-year war, these guys, they really didn't go anywhere. Uh, you know, I, I, Iraq, yeah, Iraq had, you know, a big thrust, kind of, but they spoiled it. And, and then, then they got pushed back. Guess, hey, guess how they pushed them back? Yeah, that's right. Hey, you civilians become martyrs, and then they just rushed at them like old Soviet tactics. You know, basically, I'm gonna hand you a gun and hand this guy a bullet. And if one falls, you guys pick up the other one, all right? But meanwhile, keep moving forward because that's what Allah wants you to do. <clears throat> and they said, okay, somehow you get people to sign up for it. And what ended up happening was uh, right around that border, it turned into trench warfare. Yeah, I don't know, trench warfare, who would think? But yeah, they dug trenches. And as these human waves came across, the uh, Iraqis, digga, 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 digga. and, you know, that's why the, the dead is much, uh, as high as it is. Uh, they went back and forth. Now, so, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, human waves. Oh, another thing to back off those human waves. Uh, Iraq did something to help balance things out uh, since they weren't going to get their people to do human waves because no one's going to believe that uh, uh, Saddam found Allah. Uh, so, but Saddam did find something called chemical weapons and he fired those things on over and was slaughtering people left and right with mustard gas and, and whatnot. Uh, so Saddam had no qualms about 
taking out human waves with chemical weapons. So, yay. So <laughs> it sounds like a great party time over there. <laughs> so now, <laughs> now I'm going to show you. Uh, so there's Saddam, young, dapper Saddam. You know, so much life uh, to go. Yeah, looks uh, good. You know, the world is his oyster. And this guy, I mean, look at uh, uh, Kamini. I mean, he really pulls off the uh, Unabomber look. So he's got that, that, that stare going down that burns right through uh, men's soul. What, uh, who's that guy, uh, Rasputin? <laughs> you know, kind of like that Rasputin thing. But the thing is, is that if you weren't alive back then, Kamimi was the second most hated man in the United States during the 80s. The second. Now, it was another Iranian who was the most hated. That was the Iron Sheik. <laughs> the Iron Sheik. <laughs> Was the most hated man in the United States. Uh, <laughs> now this, now it's because if you fought Sajin Slaughter every week, day in day out, and beat him, you're not going to be, you know, the the American public's not going to look too kindly on you. So <laughs> this guy was on TV every week talking about the great things about Iran during the uh, during the eighties. Now. What I like in this publicity photo from uh, the WWF, that's what it was called back then, it had nothing to do with pandas. I think we could separate the two, <laughs> wrestling and pandas. Now, unless there's a wrestling panda, which I don't think there is. <laughs> the thing about this is, it takes Just a look at the publicity one. photo. Oh, my gosh. I, I think the WWF didn't think people were smart enough to figure out that there was the Iranian flag. So instead of doing the Arabic symbols on it, they wrote the word Iranian. I was noticing about the flag. Iran. I, Iran. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's Iran. You know, I, it's like, okay, well, you know, you got, you know, who's their audience, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there, there, there is in the, there is the, uh, the thing in a nutshell. Okay. <laughs> so. You you, you well, good there, Kevin? I'm glad I uh, took, I, uh, took down, down my down WWE, WWE poster. poster. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. I like, you know. Okay. okay. You guys like to watch cars make left hand turns. Everybody has their thing, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I knew someone. I was like, you have to be a goddamn lunatic to make a left hand turn. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Uh, we're going to look at the Iraqi forces. So um, here they are. Um, when you go into uh, um, our, you know, armies, uh, no, forces of war, mm -hmm. uh, this is what you would see. Now, kind of an interesting thing is I, I noticed this. Uh, the or is missing here, which is really big. You can only do one or the other. In the rule book, it's there, but uh, on the website, it's not. What I find interesting is that the Iraqis have Soviet equipment mm -hmm. with some French stuff mixed in, but NATO support. Yeah, 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 you've, yeah you yeah, took yeah, the yeah, big, yeah, exciting part exciting about Iraq, Iraq, for, Iraq sure. for sure. Who would have thought we'd be leading with the exciting support options, but uh, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, you can see some pretty cool... Uh, support options in there. They've got the uh, the French AMX AUF one SP howitzer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I think five points cheaper than the French version, but it's hit on threes and has a, a skill of five. So maybe you get that observer, um, but that's pretty cool, right? I think Keith mentioned last week how cool auto loader is, and uh, this gives the Iraqi player an option to take it. Um, you know, they've got some other exciting things like the VCR TH hot anti-tank platoon, which apparently was some sort of panard French vehicle with a AT-23 missile on it. And I think you can get four for four points. Uh, double check. Yeah, four for four points. It's got the hammerhead rule. Um, you know, that's pretty cool. That's a nice heavy hitter. You got all that cheap Soviet stuff like the carnations, the hails. The scout platoon, so you can get stuff that you know sub one point costs. 
And uh, then you got your cool little, do you want to take Heinz or do you want to take gazelles? And then, like you said, the exciting part is the uh, American air support. If you, if you like that sort of thing, you know, you can take those big Harrier bombs, which are not quite as good as tornadoes, unfortunately, or those cool A-10s so you can make the sound, which I think is a key part of any Flames of Working or Team Yankee game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As it comes in and you roll the dice, you go... <laughs> yeah. It's a good way to also hide a burp. So that's why yeah. I'm taking that stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's the exciting... I think that you, you kind of hit the the exciting thing first for, for uh, the Iraqi support is you got a lot of interesting options that you wouldn't normally see if you were running T-72s or 62s, you know, uh, that with that American air and the French support. And um, uh, The other thing about that's interesting is those gazelles are slightly cheaper. I think you can take four for 12 points. Uh, okay. And I think they're hit on threes instead of fours. Uh, uh, but it's, I think the French versions are 16 points. I, I did take some notes at some point. Yes, there they are. They're 16 points for the French and 12 points for the Iraqi. But they are hit on threes, and they save on fives, so they are your glass cannons. Uh, but no Team Yankee list is complete without some sort of glass cannon. True, 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 true. <laughs> so yeah. so the, the, the VCR, TH hot, mm -hmm. that, that's anti-tank anti, anti -tank 23? Yes, it is. It is uh, anti-tank 23. It has a... 48 inch range uh, with a minimum of eight. It's heat, it's guided. Uh, the, the vehicle has a front armor of two, side armor zero, top zero, and it is hit on threes. But with that hammerhead roll, you're going to be hit on at least fives. So, so why don't you go ahead, for those who don't know, explain the hammerhead roll. I, you can fire your, your missile and, and remain gone to ground, I believe. Uh, I don't have my card ahead of me but i believe that is the rule somebody can correct us in chat if i'm just spewing nonsense um but uh but that's pretty key right you know maintaining that uh, gun to ground uh and uh you know for four points you can get those things man that's that's a pretty cool little unit and if you're running iraqis as your main force um you know that that's something to consider i think everybody would want to consider and uh you know, stay tuned on whether or not Iraqis are your main force, because the one thing that you cut off there is, and the exciting thing to, to you know, completely blow my excite, excitement load is you can take NATO allied formations. So, so that opens a whole new world of excitement. Um, and that's kind of how I originally got excited about Iraq was uh, prior to this book, I was running mostly Abrams tanks. And uh, as everybody knows, I think an Abrams tank is pretty expensive, and especially if you upgrade them with the IMP armor. And, uh, you know, there's never enough of them to go everywhere you want and protect your objectives and assault the enemy, blah, blah, blah. So this mm -hmm. provides uh, U.S. players with an exciting option to have that kind of quintessential Soviet horde that, uh, that you didn't have before. Because um, everything, everything in the list is cheap. Um, you know, quality of units, uh, questionable, or, you know, put an asterisk there, but, uh, sure. it, 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 uh, you know, when you, when you combine in, I'm sure most people here are, you know, that are listening are, are doing some swarm of form of it, but combining that Soviet kind of tank swarm, be it 72s, 62s, 55s, whatever your, your flavor is, uh, with those Abrams, uh, which are, you know, just the ultimate assault monkey, uh, is pretty fun. Well, uh, I, I guess let's uh, let's move on to that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, if we, whoop, yeah, oh, what's, what, what's that? Whoa, Wait a okay, yeah. Oh, how, how did he pop up there? <laughs> oh, it's like the ghost. Anyway, who's that? Uh, who's oh? And, and by the way, so I uh, with that, who's that? That's Saddam. Anyway, from that movie that you're probably just putting out of your mind. <laughs> Yeah, that one. Yeah. Anyway, so just kind of like just a, a contrast. So the Iranian forces, which are NATO items, with uh, there's some mixed in there with some uh, Soviet, but mostly NATO with Russian support. It's it's like the opposite. <laughs> yeah. 
which is interesting. So I got the Chieftains and the M60s, uh, T62s. And, and by the way, uh, when I was talking about the um, the human wave, that's what these guys are, this Bosch, Bosch Asher. The no. amount of dudes that you can get, just AK-47 dudes is pretty crazy. I think it's 20 scans or something ridiculous, uh, huge amounts. Pretty cool. Yep. Yep. So if you ever want to do that and start yelling Al Akbar at the gaming table, that there you go. That, that's the force <laughs> to get. Yeah. Uh okay, but yeah, but th- so it's it's like you US, cheap US uh cheap NATO equipment, mostly US, uh with Russian support. So it's kind of the opposite. Well, anyway, so just yeah, something but look at it. it's got chieftain tanks and ugh, who wants chieftain? Blah. Nobody wants chieftains. No one wants that's what chief- I learned from my that's what I learned from the Keith video, right? Nobody wants chieftains. Nah. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Nah. But yeah, you're right. It's it is interesting. It's basically the reverse. Yep. So we'll uh, go here. So yeah, we we're you were talking about the tank battalion. So mm-hmm. you got you got the T seventy two M's, the T sixty twos, and the T fifty fives. Now yep. Uh, all the battalions are pretty much set up the same way. So you, you basically got your three black box tank, uh, you know, the HQ, and the two uh, things uh, with the third option, uh, your uh, bump one mech, your uh, BTR mech, and some type of uh, anti-air. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but... Let's uh, let's kind of look at the tanks themselves. So, oh, excellent. Uh, yeah, yeah, I brought it up as a little cheat sheet because there's no way I was going to remember. Um, <laughs> now, by the way, I, I found out that the T seventy two M's, I believe, were actually made in either Czechoslovakia or in Poland. They were not made in Russia. Right. I think that uh, I heard that somewhere too. Probably yeah, more think, droning on at some point. And I think they called them M's because, um, uh, oh, uh, I think the U.S. referred to them as monkeys. Just um, you know. <laughs> no, no, uh, yeah, did. yeah, they were known as the you know the T, the seventy two monkeys. So I don't know. The anyway, T seventy two M is uh, it's an interesting tank, as you you said, uh, in terms of it's the export version. So most Soviet players, if they play mainline Soviets, or especially from the beginning of Team Yankee, would know that the T-72 has an AT of 22 and mm-hmm. a front armor of 16, side of 8, has that BDD armor, which busts you up to, a, what is it, a 13? Uh, right. But, but it's, you know, it can be a little pricey. You can, you can get 5 for 22 points. Um, but that C-72M, the export tank for the Iraqis, you can get 5 for 13 points. So you're saving a good amount of points, but you're losing one front armor. You have bazooka skirts, which only means side of 10 versus heat, uh, and an AT-21. But, uh, you know, and, and that extra loss of AT really hurts when you're going up against NATO tanks, like uh, such as the Abrams or the Leopard 2 and all that. Um, but what's interesting is that tank and, you know, the Iraqis still hit on threes. It's got a skill of five, assault five. It's got courage four morale four remount four it is pretty similar to all the other packed tanks they've got you got you know your checks your poles your east germans and they're all just kind of little tweaks in terms of you know one has a better remount courage i think the poles have like fearless uh you know and others have even worse ah, <laughs> Yeah, they are. You know, they're stubborn ass poles. They uh, <laughs> let's see the Polish one, for instance. They've got courage three, remount three, counterattack three, but for five of those things, it costs sixteen points. So you're Joe's paying a few extra points. Oh. Uh, you know, it's three extra points. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, it's it's but you, most pack players will recognize the T seventy two and and realize, or the T-72M, and, and, you know, most of these tanks are just small little changes in terms of the uh, the morale and the skill. But, right. Uh, 
you well, know, let's, 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 what, mm-hmm. now when you when you're looking at tanks for an Iraqi army, are, are you trying to get the 72 M's or <laughs> or do you even look at the 62s or the 55s? Well, uh, I think for me the C 72s definitely have their place, but you know if you look at the you start to go down to the 62s and the 55s. Uh, the armor is basically the same. You know, you're going to get penned by all the high AT stuff anyway. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, but the, the big difference there is obviously the AT of the weapon and uh, slow firing, and you don't have laser range finders. But mm-hmm. boy, look at those points costs. That is, uh, that's some pretty cheap armor. I know you right. asked questions before about how do you deal with the Soviet swarm. Well, this is your Soviet swarm. Um, you know, for me, out of those cheaper tanks, I think. The 62 is pretty cool. It's not much more than the 55, but you're getting a little extra AT. Right. Um, you know, it, just in case you can get lucky as you're going in uh, to some of the mid-range kind of, you know, generate first generation main battle tanks. And, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I mean, that's your swarm right there. Is That's your bread and butter. Um, I think 70, 72s still have a place, uh, you know, because you, I mean, look at, you could take three for seven points. That's, pretty crazy for the Iraqi T-72, uh, you know, for an AT-21 rolling around with at least having an armor save. But, um, you know, I think what, you know, hopefully would make uh, British players or NATO players such as, you know, Keith or, uh, you know, Chris uh, sweat in their uh, sleep is the thought of, uh, you know, 10 T-62s rumbling around the side of all their vehicles. Because <laughs> that's where, you know, you start to cause some chaos. And, and, you know, you can throw, even if you bought the T-62 platoon, I believe it's, I can't read it, but I think it's 10 for 15 <laughs> for the 62s. Uh, it's if you were to take it's 15, for, yeah, 15 for 10. Uh, reverse that. I think it's 10 tanks for 15 points, right? Or 10 tanks for 15 okay, points, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like, boy, man, that talk about that, that's pretty cheap for 10 vehicles um you know like i said uh, front armor 13 versus a 15 man you're still getting penned by most nato stuff uh you know the the one thing that is concerning for i don't think the t62s have them but the 55s might is the uh bazooka skirts even if you do it only takes you up to side armor 10 so you can mm-hmm. get killed by uh laws so so these right. things will die pretty quickly in assaults, and you know you're only swinging on fives anyway. But uh, so you got to be careful with them. They are still glass cannons to a degree, but uh, you know at least you have saves against some annoying like AA units or things like that. People think they're clever, lowering their AA barrels at you. You can at least save or bounce. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah. I mean. I think, uh, you know, that Soviet swarm, look at that, that's, or Iraqi swarm, that's pretty juicy. You know, that 62 and 55. And I guess apparently, I don't know if they cover it in the book, because I'll admit I only have the forces or Team Yankee forces of war, but uh, the Type 69 tank that Iraq bought from China was called the 55A or something like that. If somebody knows in the chat, please correct me, but... So you could run 69s, type 69s, as your 55s, I think, in this. Yeah, I, actually, I see in the chat that um, uh, Rich mentions. I was reading about that. Yeah, because uh, when the war was going on, there was an embargo, and uh, you couldn't ship uh, equipment to uh, people. And I, I like how the Soviets were playing both sides. You know, oh, you uh, you need the uh, equipment, huh? I, I give you deal, okay? And then uh, you know the then the Iranians came over. Oh, equipment, I give you deal, you know. And uh, so they were selling equipment to both sides, and uh, um, yeah, they were talking about how they would, you know, basically give them all the parts, and then they would assemble them over there in Iraq to try to get around all this stuff. Um, so for the 72s and stuff. Yeah. 
very interesting. I got to say, Joe, your uh, your Soviet accent was still uh, better than uh, Sean Connery's in Hunt for the Red October. I don't care what anybody else says. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, All right. <laughs> I read your book anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, so or Sam Neill, you know, talk about somebody more relevant that's still putting out movies. Great Jurassic World uh, Dominion coming out soon. He's going to be back as Alan Grant. Isn't he in there? He t- uh, wants to retire to Montana. So, classic. <laughs> okay. That's my historical document that I read those types of books. <laughs> All right. Jurassic World. Uh, yeah. who, who, did the, who did the first Jurassic Park? Spielberg. Uh, oh no, who wrote oh, it? Who wrote um, it? Um, Michael Crichton. Crichton. Yeah, Crichton. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You never know. When you invite me to one of these talks about Iraq, you never know what tangents I'm going to take you down, Joe. This is no, that's fine. Factor, you know that you know that is what makes doing these things live exciting. There's no end <laughs> here. There's no net. There's, yeah. There's no net. You know, yeah. and you got to take it as it comes. You know. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> good good jujitsu. So, um, all right. Any, anything else about the tanks? I, I, I by the way, the T fifty five can have bazooka skirts, and the T sixty two does not. So I guess it's a uh, slip is showing or something. I, yeah, I mean, again, bazooka skirts shouldn't really excite you that much because I think it brings you up to a ten. Which yeah, nine to a ten. You know, you're not you're not really that excited. Um, but you know, the big difference is three a three at difference does make a pretty decent difference for pretty minimal points. So I think the sixty twos are pretty fun in terms of yeah. you know if you're looking at Iraqi tanks, uh, you know they've they're they've got a cool place in most swarm armies. I think, uh, and and you can easily do it too. I mean that's. I hope you like assembling and putting a lot of models together. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. We'll we'll, uh, we'll move on. Uh, <clears throat> then there are two infantry options: mm-hmm. <clears throat> the uh, uh, the bump one and the uh, BTR mech Italian. Now, uh, once again, they're all they're all similar. You get your HQ and your uh, two black box options with the option for third, but the options to go along with that are the same. Uh, so you can have s- some type of AA, some type of artillery, and anti uh, spandle, 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 spandrel. <laughs> That's it, spandrel, and a tank option as your uh, as your core. Um, what what uh, what's your thoughts on these two? I mean, True. oh, by the way, I, I'm gonna, I got this too. Oh, good. Yes, yeah, so I, I I happen to pull mine up as well from my forgetful brain. Um, one of the interesting things about Iraqi infantry, I think most people have at least seen uh, Soviet or Warsaw Pact infantry in the past uh, in some form of the game. Uh, they don't have like an RPG 18. For just their their normal AK teams do not have any sort of RPG on them. They're just AK teams. So you'll notice that if you look at the weapon stat line of the Iraqis, it's just AK-47. Whereas you go to like the Volks army, it has uh, AK-47 or RPG-18. So, uh, you know, just as a quick reminder for anybody playing Iraqis, you don't have... Uh, you know, those AK teams are just AK teams for, for both the BMP and the BTR. So uh, that's the the thing that I would say most players, you know, kind of need to keep an eye on. Um, other than that, they're typical Soviet schlock. You know, there's you can get a lot of them. They're cheap. Um, you, you can dig them in. They're going to die against NATO. You know, equal number of NATO dudes coming at you. You you should be a little scared unless you can throw them back in defensive fire. Um, mm-hmm. you know, they're they're not going to hit too hard. They don't have a great counterattack. Um, the cool thing for the BMP one uh, company is you know if you look at your your top option there for fourteen points, you can take twelve BMP ones. So right. you're looking at an eighteen an eighteen nineteen missile. Uh, it has a slightly worse minimum range. I think the minimum is uh, 16 inches. 
instead of eight inches, it's double the minimum range. So keep keep an eye on that. Oh, uh, if you're playing, yeah, BMP ones, and I think that's pretty universal for all BMP ones. They have a crappier minimum. So if you're playing against an Iraqi uh, or a Soviet with BMP ones, keep in mind of that. And if you're playing the BMP ones, keep in mind if you're setting them up, you know, as a defensive unit or whatnot. If you're going to hide them in a wood or something, you know, keep in mind that minimum range is going to limit their effectiveness. But then, then again, you're probably buying infantry because you like having some sort of, you know, a little bit of a hold of an objective. And the fact that you get 12 or nine, if you take the middle option, uh, BMP ones as basically bonus, boy, man, that's mm -hmm. nice. Especially if you go back to the idea of taking heavier elite NATO core formations or allied formations where you're going to sink a lot of points into it to be able to get a, a cheap unit to hold an objective with a crap load of okay missiles, you know, that can kill anything but main battle tanks. Mm -hmm. And if you're going up against Soviet main battle tanks or other Warsaw Pact battle tanks, you can even kill those. Boy, man, that is, that's why I think the BMP one is where I like to put my points if I'm taking infantry, but you know, mm -hmm. I've seen people swarm objectives with uh, BTR infantry, just, swarming uh you know over and over and over again until they finally win and uh that can happen but i think that's a little bit of a slower game and uh you know when you're looking at two and a half hours pushing around that many models is going to be a concern because if you're taking btrs you're probably taking a million and a half other things and you've got to measure even if you're only measuring one thing in the unit and, and moving the rest just kind of about around it you're still moving 20 odd models per unit or you know a crap load of models. So timing has to be a concern, you know, if you're going to be the Uber swarm with the BTRs and things. Well, on the BTRs, uh, there's a whole, there's a thing where you can play with the AMX 10 P. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is the AMX 10 P? Just, uh, it's a French infantry transport vehicle, I believe. Uh, I don't know. It never excited me that much. I'll be honest. Yeah. Well, why is it can, worth Three more points. Uh, boy, you, you got me there. We'd have to pull it up <laughs> or let somebody uh, with the 10 P card. Let me see here. I'll pull it up uh, while we're looking at it. I even have, I have some French in boxes, but I don't know. It never excited me. Let's take a look. Well, I, I noticed one thing about the, the BTR company. I mean, uh, you get a lot of guys. Oh, by the mm -hmm. way, it, they're AK 47s. Meanwhile, the Russian infantry has AK seventy fours. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I it must be. I don't know the difference between them too well. I'm I'm not a huge gun nut. I live in California. Well, I can't be legally. Well, like. the uh, the <laughs> you okay? Ready? Mm -hmm. The AK forty seven was invented in nineteen forty seven, and the AK seventy four. Received a well, it was basically redesigned, mm -hmm. and it was released in '74. Oh, uh, I thought you were going to say they were accidentally holding a box up to a mirror and just saw no. the numbers in reverse. But no, uh, know, they the, uh, they updated the uh, 47 to the seven you know, to the 74 and improved a bunch of char characteristics. Uh, yeah. You know, but uh, but the AK-47 still the most numerous weapon in the world i think other than a rock <laughs> yeah there's quite a few of those yeah um, the uh amx 10p is front one side one top one it's got a anti-helicopter at6 uh 20 millimeter cannon an mg optional okay. milan missile i don't even know if you can get that with the iraqis uh you you can you can get you can add a Milan for two points for the BTR group. Ah, there you uh, go. And you say the Milan mount a Met company mounted uh, the MP10P transports may remove the Milan missile team before the game and mount it uh, a a Milan missile up to three transports of. Uh, AXM tens. So basically, for five more points, you can get yourself three Milans. 
Well, I mean, at that point, eight, I know the Milan is AT21, but uh, geez, that's a lot of points. You might as well just take a crap load of BMP ones and do it the good old Soviet way. Oh, just overwhelm. But yeah, I, I mean, you know, you can get for 14 points, you can get uh, 12 of them, right? So that's pretty good. Well, speaking of which, let's, let's take a look at these weapons. Wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. There you go. Yeah, actually, it's supposed to move. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. There's, so there's the AK 47, the uh, PKM light machine gun, uh, then the RPG, uh, RPG 7. Boy, there's a lot of those in the world. Yeah. And here's the yeah. two things I, I like to talk about: the uh, the the uh, surface. Uh, to, I guess that's surface to air missile seven. Mm-hmm. Is that a grail? Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I this I, I was looking at this bad boy, and I'm like, you know, there's no. I, I had to see a video of it taking, you know, being shot. But there's no blast shield for the face. So when you let this thing go, I mean, are, are you getting peppered in the face with some back, back exhaust? I'm just curious. Uh, it's a literal one-shot weapon in that case, then, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And th- and then then this the uh, the uh, uh, a Sagger. Now, by the way, when I was putting this together, and I put in, I just put in the word Sagger into the browser. <laughs> I didn't get missiles. <laughs> I yeah. let's just say I, I got females who desperately need brassiers. Yeah, <laughs> gravity's not been kind to. Yes. So <laughs> I'm like, well, oh, whoops. Anyway, I'm glad I didn't do it at work. Yeah, oof, that'd be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I was probably one of the milder searches on my work computer, so I wouldn't. Believe yeah. Too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, the interesting thing is, so you you got the missile here on this little platform, and this wire here, t- uh, you know, attaches it. And what you do is, uh, you look through the little the viewfinder here, and it kind of does a telescope thing up. And then there's a joystick, and the guy controls the missile. And brings it into the target. I'm like, well, that's interesting. I and I think this thing's wire guided. So and and this can't be the spool. The spool must be in this tank or something. I don't know, uh, but I I think it's wire guided. Someone probably could correct me out there. You know, I'm sure someone would be more than happy to correct me. Uh, well, we would but, also want to know how many rivets it has if you are going to be able to correct Joe. So yeah, please yeah. let us know. In the comments below, that's a trick question. There are no rivets. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it it's Sonic Weld. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, there I don't you know. go. But yeah, so that's the little Sagger uh, missile unit uh, that, uh, that you know, a joystick fly right on in. Um, you kind of, yeah. I'll have to hand it to the uh, um, the Soviets uh, putting something together. But uh, I know one thing, uh, they must have a lot of wood there in, in Siberia uh, because all their weapons have wood um, on them. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Very good point. It's gorgeous. Good uh, grain. But, yeah. And it, by the way, it's a nice stain. I, I like that. You know, it's yeah. not, it's yeah, not good light. Color. It's not too dark. Uh, you, know? you know, the Battlefront ones have like a really, really light paint job when they first started showing the how to paint. And I could have never believed it, but you know that looks pretty close, I guess, to their suggested yeah. paint paint scheme. So tip tip of my hat. <laughs> uh, are there any special, um, you know, rules uh, for the Iraqis? Boy, I don't. I mean, I, this is, there's really not many special special rules for any okay. of the factions. Is I'm, I, but you know, I mean, they've got. If you know, if you play Soviets and you know the Soviet rules, uh, you'll, you're 99% of the way there. Then you just got to know things like uh, Hammerhead, 
uh, and uh, auto loader. But you know, there's some Soviet units that have auto loader. Dana's, I think. Uh, somebody can agree with me. But uh, yeah, I don't think there's any special ones. The special rules is in their formation support. Like I've said, you know, the fact that you can take NATO uh, opens up your possibilities significantly. Well, um, yeah. So I, I brought it back to that. Um, what, so if, you know, you're in there, um, like when we were talking to Keith, he, he was saying his go-to unit is his Harrier. What is, what's the Iraqis go-to unit? Boy, you know, that's, uh, that's ludicrous to me to say that your go-to unit is something that hardly ever comes in and is never going to kill any of my great Iraqi armor. We're not scared of those sound generating flying birds we don't care about those uh i think the go-to unit for the iraqi is uh you know it's got to be their their tanks or anything it, it, it's their tanks you know the swarm i think is the go-to and that's the attracting thing that was the original attracting thing to me as uh as an originally a usa player was uh you know the low cost and uh you know sure the the hot the VCR hot support unit there is pretty awesome. Um, but, you know, you don't take a, an entire list just so you can get one little unit like that for four points. You know, and their air behind is is close enough to the gazelle. Sure, the gazelle gets killed a lot easier, but, you know, it's, it's still just got a missile on it. Who cares? But, uh, well, you know, artillery is artillery. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, what, would you go high or gazelle? <laughs> Uh, I think, well, you know, aesthetically, uh, you got to go hind. It's a much cooler looking model. Uh, right. But, uh, you know, uh, for me, from a philosophy perspective, and I know people are going to call me ludicrous, both in Flames of War and Team Yankee, it wouldn't be the first time. I'm not big on air units. What? Uh, yeah, or helicopters. Uh, I mean, sure. I think I think I like the hind just because they, they can stick around a little bit longer. You know, the four up save is. Uh, pretty hilarious the gazelles i feel like you know you're going to run into a 50 cal somewhere and it's going to be a bad day and you're going to lose airplanes and, or a helicopter's going to be upset but yeah overall for me uh, i would rather just have more tank models on the table because they're the ones that are ultimately going to take objectives no oh, okay all right yeah yeah all right i i, I one thing i like about the hind it, it can you can bring it on board and still yeah. shoot yeah, I mean, it's a cool unit. It's and it's cheap. The Iraqi Hind, you can get four of them for ten points. There's a lot of places where you can fill that, put those in. I mean, hit on three, yeah. save on four. That's it's got an AT twenty three missile, so you can't complain. I, I do think they're cool models. If you're going to travel with them, that's going to be annoying. Putting four of those things in a battle foam bag is like half your bag. Just as a word of warning, if anybody's <laughs> traveling with Hinds. Uh, right. Good luck keeping those uh, propellers together. If anybody knows in chat, if anybody knows who makes those little plexiglass discs, have you seen those, Joe? The plexiglass, yeah. they look great. That have the little etchings to make it look like a twirly bird. Man, that guy would, I would buy some right now. Those things are awesome looking. If anybody knows who, who does that, uh, let us all know, please. Then, uh, um, so if you were doing a, a tank formation, uh, mm-hmm. obviously you're you're probably more set up for attacking than defending. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it probably. I think attack and maneuver is probably where you're you're more set up. Um, but you know, depending on the points level of the game and and how many, if you have another formation or if you're just going pure tanks to the wall then sure, you probably want to attack and maneuver. But if you've got, you know, some beefy support units without high front armor, you know, maybe maybe defend is in the cards too because those tanks can come in and, you know, if you bring 10 uh, T-62s off the edge of the table and that's, you know, a big portion of your reserves, that could hurt a lot of people. But, yeah, I think you want to attack with them. Um. What you know, say say you had a hundred point or hundred twenty point uh, game. Uh, what what NATO formation do you think you'd pair up with with the Iraqis? Uh, I think everybody should. If you're going to do it, I think look at the Abrams, so the armored cavalry, 
I think most mm. American players have kind of shifted away from an Abrams tank company to that armored cavalry. It's not maybe mm-hmm. as good as it used to be in, in uh, version one where, you know, having that reroll with your formation leader could make them run away. That, uh, you know, armored cavalry really was pretty cool back then when you were war- risking a basically a one point unit. But, you know, that armored cavalry still has some pretty cool things. It's got a lot of integrated scouts and, uh, you know, you can only bring one platoon of M, uh, M1s if you want. Uh, right. You know, so... You know, it gives you the flexibility of bringing a huge platoon uh, of tanks with a cool some some cool support options. But you know, if you wanted to go huge at 120 points, you know, maybe you bring two platoons. Um, I think the M1 Abrams um, is the missing piece for a lot of Iraqi, at least the way I like to play the Iraqis in the Abrams lists. In that the Abrams are, like I said before, one of the best assault units in the game. Uh, you know, with mm-hmm. the uh, Chobham armor, their side armor goes up to 16. So most missiles that can actually fire in defensive fire uh, can only bail you, as as you mentioned in previous episodes. So, right. uh, you know, um, Abrams are going to roll over most infantry, dug in infantry with with ease, hopefully, if things are going well. But, uh, you know, whereas Iraqi units, if you tried to do that with even T-72s, uh, even Soviet mainline T-72s, you're going to have a rough day because you're going to just take missiles to the face. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, if you were, you know, uh, what advice would you get to someone who wants to start a, an Iraqi force? Where, where do you think they should go or or mm-hmm. what advice can you give them? Well, I mean, the first thing you got to do is you got to start and watch like jarheads then maybe gener- you know, generation kill. Get your get the juices flowing and get your, your mindset into that that area. And then, you know, maybe then just buy. Uh, I think you could never go wrong with T-72s. Uh, They're a little bit less swarmy, so you're not going to have to drop $8 billion to get enough to field a, you know, 80-point list. Uh, mm-hmm. But they're still, you know, cheap, and you can use them in all your other lists. You can always repay them if you want to run them as Soviets later on. You know, it's kind of like the, uh, the the version of the Flames of War Sherman. You can't go wrong with it. Um, and they and they got that Saddam Hussein starter set that comes with some helicopters too, which is cool. Um, but you know, get get some tanks, maybe get an infantry platoon, get some BMPs. You know, I mean, if you're starting Iraqis and you have a limited amount of money, though, you know, probably seventy twos just because they're most they're the most expensive tank that you can get is a good place to start. Oh, very good. Um, what's, uh, what is going, is there any questions? Well, so, you still have Patrick's question out there. Go uh, for it. When was Patrick's uh, Does Kevin feel there is any playable differences between Iraqis and Syrians? All right. So now that we know about Iraqis, what can you tell us about Syrians? <laughs> Well, I've, I've played uh, against some Syrians a few times, and I've you know looked at the list. I know uh, Igor plays them from time to time, and some of the other guys down at the club. But uh, I think it's it's you know in that support secret sauce that is a little bit different. Other than that, playing Iraqi, if you're just going to play a bunch of tanks, is really no different than playing any of the major powers: the Czechs, the Poles, the East Germans. They all they all got that cheap you know, crappy swarm with crappier AT. So I think where you're looking at is the, uh, you know, the support is the big difference. Because, you know, do you want a frog foot or do you want a Harrier? Do you want an A-10? You know, do you really like the French artillery because of the autoloader? Especially in the new version, right, with uh, repeat bombardments. Right. Everybody thinks that's going to be the new secret sauce to kill a million and a half dug in infantry. Well, autoloader is going to make that pretty cool. So, sure. You know, that's, that's, I think, where the big difference is. Okay. Um, any, any other questions? Um, not really. More than anything else, we have, you know, basically just comments. Did you want to play uh, what did we learn today? Let's play what have we learned today. Uh, so go, why don't you go get us your what have we learned questions up there uh, or, or statements. Uh, what did we learn today, guys? Come on, we got <laughs> yeah. Hey, Kevin, uh, did mm-hmm. you learn anything today? Uh, well, I, I had a, qu- a pretty comprehensive history uh, instruction there, lecture 
from uh, Mr. Joe Lewis that was pretty much all new knowledge minus a few of the very simple things. That was a terrific poor part. Uh, I learned, uh, you know, this is uh, a lot harder than it looks doing these, uh, these broadcasts. It was a lot of fun though. Uh, it's always great to talk to people, especially uh, during this uh, COVID panic, you know, I, I hardly talk to anybody anymore. So I feel like I can just spew it all out and get my quota of talking in for the week. <laughs> yeah. A person. A person. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, Andrew Watson said, hey, we need to explain the auto lo auto lo loader rule. Okay. Um, why, don't you, why don't you go ahead and explain? Uh, I think we touched on it, but uh, Kevin, why don't you go ahead and, you know, auto lower? Auto loader. I believe it's uh, one less to hit. <laughs> right. For an artillery. Yeah. Player. After you range in, if uh, say if if you need a three to hit, say it's Russians or something like that, you need the three. You get you range in first time. You need a three to hit, and they become twos. Uh, and then after that, you know, uh, and then the repeat bombardments and uh, yeah. Six I mean, if, you're, if you reroll misses. <laughs> So, oh yeah, you know you could get some pretty, some pretty gnarly, uh, some pretty gnarly hits, and it's a, and it's a firepower two weapon, right? And and that that I think that's the the coupe, coupe de gras for our mm -hmm. unit is the, uh, um, the 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 two plus. So yeah, if you uh, you have a whole bunch of them, ranging in, re rolling, getting them to re roll their saves, and it's a two up firepower, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a spicy meatball. That's what the yeah, Iraqis would spicy. say. <laughs> it is um, a Igor has a question. He uh oh, how much AA should an Iraqi list have? Whoa. It's I mean you can get one part as part of your core. You know you can get some shilkas, so you might as well always take that. And you know if you look at the Gophers, they're bonkers cheap. You know less than a point a unit, I think, if not a point a unit at most. So you might as well get AA because you know, uh, dastardly British people are going to think their uh, their tornadoes are so cool. ATA, ooh, we're so scared. Just fill fill the <laughs> fill the air uh, with missiles and bullets, and you'll be fine. Uh, but uh, you know, as part as an Iraqi player, you don't care. Blow up some tanks. You know what? Those are acceptable losses, and I'll keep saying that till the end of the game when I have nothing left. It's all acceptable. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, you know what? Uh, Saddam and the uh, Ayatollah uh, agreed. <laughs> agreed. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see what people learn here. Eric Deutsch, they learned that there is another cool player out there, and that he's got to go to California because he's got to use the plane ticket. Um, okay. Um, First beer's on me, Eric. Nice to meet uh, you. Jonathan Meyer said, I'd like to run Israeli with Iraqi support. That's uh, strange bedfellows. Yeah, that is very strange bedfellows. <laughs> I tip my hat to that. Do it. That's awesome. <laughs> That's <know>. incredible. <laughs> okay. Just don't uh, watch any well, today. Okay. Oh, here's one. So I'm trying to scroll up here. To oh, see I'm sorry. You got, Kevin, you got, got a little walked on. I'm sorry. Well, what did you say? What did you say, Kevin? Did I get walked on? A little. Uh, Ann was stating something. I'm sorry. Oh, no, don't worry. And I apologize for if I even made it seem that way. It was probably just some sort of asinine comment that didn't need to be. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know, but I wanted to hear the asinine comment. <laughs> well, I was I, I was, was mentioning about the uh, Israeli Iraqi matchup. That's incredible. I tip my hat to it. Just don't use any Scud missiles. You know, Scud missiles. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah that, 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 that would make the, the uh, Israelis very a little upset. Um, so I was going <laughs> to learn today from Rick Bayer. I said, what I learned, uh, notice to Facebook so I don't get pulled for hate posts. This is a joke expressed to people I know. I hate Iraqis, too. <laughs> so, okay. Where's my report button? Uh, the, uh, Stephen Lawless said the SZS, sorry, ZSU 57 twos, they are super cheap and kill... IFVs. Uh, infantry fighting vehicles. Yes, yeah, so infantry fighters. Okay. case. And, and Andrew Hobbs says that I learned Iraqis can't finish a, a game in 2.5 hours. You got to be careful uh, about that. Andrew's 100% right. But that's any sort of Warsaw Pact player. You know, just to, yeah. you got you to gotta keep you got keep a mind of your time. And if you're going to sit there and try to move a billion and a half models, you're going to have two and a half turns. 
you know, at best. Yeah, yeah true, true. I, I think it goes for the any very, very large army, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to move fast. Um, yeah. Uh, any... uh, Igor says, Vincent Arroyo, what's the worst matchup that you see for Iraqi lists? <laughs> well, I played Vince at, at uh, in Vegas, and he kicked my butt legitimately at night. Night is a scary beast for the Warsaw Pact and the Iraqi player, right? Because, you know, he had helicopters, and he just decimated my AA and then just started killing all of my glorious little tanks. So I tip my hat to him. He's a great player and a good guy. So hopefully he, if he's on here, say hi to him. Uh, was he uh, was he U.S. or something? Yeah. Yeah, he had uh, Cobras. Cobras running up the yin-yang. And then he had Huey. Uh, he had his Huey infantry hanging in the, in to, the, to the side. Uh, at night, he, he killed my Shulkas, that dastardly devil. And then he killed my gophers, and uh, you know that was that. It was uh, it was painful. That was a good game. He's a good player. Yep. Yeah, I think we're gonna be seeing more of him. Uh, yeah. As time goes on. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, doesn't seem like we have any other. I don't think we have any other things that people learned today. Yeah. Did anybody else learn anything else? It's did, special. Did you learn anything? Uh, quick, quick, think of something Soviet sounding. <laughs> wow. Well, the Kevin's cool. All right. Yeah, okay. it's great All right. His iPad works. His iPad works. <laughs> hey, my computer was working. Oh, the there. Iron Sheik. I learned that the Iron Sheik is yeah. badass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Iron Sheik, the most hated person during the, uh, the most hated I Iranian during uh during the 80s oh stephen Wallace wanted to point out that speaking of night milan's give the unit that has them infrared okay right. you got a couple of infrared options but all in all man it's tough you're uh, you're gonna uh, suffer at Igor, night. Igor says he learned that you did laundry kevin <laughs> yeah Igor says did? he learned you did laundry <laughs> joe i did this for you just so you know i wanted to impress so i wore my best hawaiian shirt it's good. Vincent <laughs> says, I learned more tanks better. That's right. More better. <laughs> more tanks better. More actually, it's more tanks gooder. Gooder. <laughs> more tanks gooder. <laughs> He's just saying that because he wants to blow up more tanks. I don't know about that. You know? <laughs> more targets better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well. Uh, so what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna be playing out here, uh, and that, um, well, first of all, this is actually the end. It's, it's fitting with the theme. Uh, this is the end of Ramadan. Ends up on the uh, the twenty fourth. So, uh, and it is uh, evening. Uh, so we're gonna be doing this, and I just want to let you know. For those people who thought I might come on here wearing like a turban and yelling Allah Akbar, I, you know what? I, I, I'm above such activities. <laughs> but, and so what we're going to do is go out peacefully here. Uh, why don't you go ahead and play us out, Ann? And don't forget and, to say thank you. Joe. I know. I got that right there. And Kevin. Thank you very thank much, you Joe. It was a pleasure. On. Thank you for the <laughs> And it was a real blast. And I, I yeah. can't wait to see you in June. And yeah, uh, wait, oh, but, man, we always have fun. Yeah, uh, next week, the day after Memorial Day, I have Chris Fretz coming on to talk about the U.S. I That's might incredible. do something with it. Huh? That guy, you know, he's uh, he's a pretty good guy, so uh, I'll, I'll get my pen and paper out. I can't wait to take some notes, especially yeah. on uh, being polite and uh, and kind to people. I really need to take notes on that part. Yes, and, uh, <laughs> and the week after that, and in two weeks, I got Chuck Heiner discussing the French. I'll bring uh, something to plug my nose. It's going to be smelling. <laughs> like that. 
Yeah, and, and you might actually hear me speak French. Oh, wow. Or not. That's a time I did not know you had, Joe. Uh, that's exciting. <laughs> no. Yeah, we. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, I feel like we're, uh, you just transported me straight to uh, Champ de you know? That's yeah, amazing. you know, it was <laughs> as if you were on, yeah, yeah. Uh, at a crepery on yeah. some side street in France. And there I am in my little beret <laughs> with a baguette <laughs> and a glass of wine, you know? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds like fun. Okay. <laughs> yes. So that, uh, and then I'm going to sketch. Uh, I think I got two more I could do after that. And then uh, we will be broadcasting, uh, doing some broadcasting from the event itself. So this is all a build up to that. Exciting. Uh, it's going to be a blast. All right. So go ahead and play us out. A long walk about a long walk about a long walk about a long walk about. It's going to go on for a while, do I? Well, we know what Akbar says. Right? Allah what, Allah what, he was a general in Star Wars, right? Akbar? No, no. Oh, wrong guy. Wrong guy. <laughs> you have to have a set of pipes on you to do this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I'm letting you know, I'm doing all this forever. I, I brought up the shrine to the fallen. <laughs> I'm doing it reverent. You know, I know some of you probably were taking side bets. Can he actually do it? I'm doing it. <laughs> Four minutes? Wow. That's a call to prayer. Four minutes. That's yeah. one heck of an outro. It, it, how many times do you have to ask? <laughs> All right, everybody. Until next week.